Alleluia, Alleluia. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your cross you have redeemed the world. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It seems odd, especially to non-Christians, that we would celebrate a feast in honor of an instrument of torture and capital punishment. But the cross is so much more to us. The cross has become the tree of life. And so, like the evil one led us into sin through a tree, God's Son conquers sin and death on the wood of a tree. We who had been led into temptation are now led into salvation. Why? Because God so loved the world. God's love is deeper and wider than we can fashion, than we can even imagine. And it means our salvation. Because of God's love, he created us in God's image so that from our conception, not only in our mother's womb, but our conception in the mind of God, we are made in God's image. We are called to be like God. We are not gods ourselves. That's another sin and temptation that we fall into. But we are made to be like God. And God sees and loves in us what the Father sees and loves in his Son, Jesus Christ. And because God so loves, indeed God is love, because he so loves, he gives and he sacrifices and he walks the journey of life with us. A journey that very quickly 
for God's chosen people led to their patience being worn out. The people complained against God and against Moses as they wandered in the desert. It doesn't take me 40 years or four years or 40 minutes sometimes for my patience to be worn out and to start complaining to God or to anyone who might listen. But God hears our cries. He responds in love so that even as we experience suffering in the here and now, God is planning for our redemption, for our healing, for our resurrection. Long before God sent his son into the world, God had Moses take an image, make an image of the symbol of the suffering of the people, the serpent who was biting them and leading to death, and place that image on a pole. But far from being a, an idol or an object of worship, God was calling them to trust, to believe, not in this bronze object, but in the one who called them to believe. So we too, who are made in the image and likeness of God, indeed, St. John Vianney says, even our bodies make the sign of the cross. We are called to look upon the image of suffering that God shares in it in our suffering and to believe that God's love conquers all and raises us up with his son so that whatever thing might be leading to our impatience or whatever genuine suffering we or our loved ones might be experiencing, it is not the end of the story. God's saving death and resurrection is shared with us. And so we share in the cross. The cross of death becomes the cross of victory. And we are proud to wear and to bear this symbol in our lives.